Hello, everybody, and welcome to this very special chat, albeit a little bit late uh, because we should have done this a couple of weeks ago. Um, tonight, I'm going to be chatting to the very, very awesome Gerant Radford. Hello. Hello. How's it going? Right. <laughs> all right. We made it. We made it. Just about, Lam. We about. made it. I'm going to. Yeah. I'm going to tell everyone. I'm going to tell everyone, Garen. So, yeah, for those of you that were, were looking forward to seeing Garen when I did the unboxing back on the uh, launch day for the 90 millimeter macro, sadly, all sorts of technical issues went down. We could not get it to where we briefly had you for about 10, 15 seconds, didn't we? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. um, and we were both gutted, but. We rearranged, and then, <laughs> then not 30 minutes ago, the gremlins occurred again, didn't they? They came yeah. back. Oh, dude, the internet literally got cut off in my house, so I'm not even in my house. Like, yeah, I'm you're somewhere actually... else now. Yeah, yeah, you're not in your house. I you're didn't not, even know who lived here. Like... <laughs> <laughs> you just went into the, next, the nearest just, house that looked like it had internet, right? I just kicked the door in, carrying all my stuff, <laughs> and I was like, I need this, all right? I flashed some sort of badge. They thought there was, like, official. <laughs> and oh, was, like, man. But you know what? It's so good that we actually finally made it. And and just so that everybody knows how um, how tight these things can get sometimes, I think we had six minutes spare when everything was working, didn't we? Oh, yeah, six minutes though. to go. <laughs> and I'm not going to jinx it, actually, because last time I said, maybe I styled it out. And then it went straight <laughs> off again. But you yeah, were not no, no, no. I've got your presentation. I'm going to run That's it all fine. from here for you tonight. So okay. we'll uh, we'll go from there. But what are we talking about? We're talking about... Da, 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 da. I know. Yes. Oh my god. Yeah. We've already have like a, a little mutual cuddle of the 90 mil. Mm, I such, know. Such an amazing thing, right? I know. I, I didn't think I could love an inanimate object, but I tell you what, you're like you know, the date's booked. The date's booked. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All it needs, all it needs is a set of googly eyes on the front, right? Just on the We can side. make that happen. We can, we do, can it. Make, we can do that. We can do it. So we're gonna we're gonna I keep looking over here because my old setup. I'm gonna like I commit to you. Yeah. So everybody that's looking. So so Garant's screen and his camera not where they normally would be. So no. we're just gonna yeah. do this and it's gonna be fine. We're gonna have loads of fun. We're gonna see some of Garant's amazing images that oh. I've just had literally a brief glimpse at as he sent me the presentation. Um, but we'll get into that. We'll have a little bit of a. We'll just sort of be like kids in a candy store talking about this. But um, I'm just gonna say some quick hello. Some people that that made it from the last one so helen's in barry's in deborah's in uh hi to everybody that all over the world because we've got people from the uk we've got people in i think that was where we got norway and i was like norway uh we've got yawn uh missouri so globally this, this is, is how incredible it is and it's yeah, awesome fantastic. thank you everyone like, and we can't say hello yeah. to everybody but um but hello everybody so should we should we jump in should we get to it let's get to it now right. um okay yeah, let's you, let's let me let me click the button for you. Here we let's go. Let's do it. Uh, so this is basically uh, my these are kind of like my first thoughts. I'll say that. Oh God, I'm fucking up here. My third, first thoughts, but um, yeah, honestly, like I I can't just say it enough. I genuinely believe this is the coolest thing that that's ever been made in the history of everything. I love this thing. It's if you're a macro shooter, it's it's just perfect, isn't it? There's it just is. nothing. There's, it um, is. And, I, and I love your base description there. The, the best thing that's ever been created ever. Just flat. Yeah. That's, that yeah, is it. Flat. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's certainly better than the internet. <laughs> Way better than the internet. Way yeah. better than the internet. So obviously, <laughs> so, obviously, I'm controlling your presentation. So, you let me know when you want to go to the next slides, okay? Okay. Okay. Cool. So, yeah, these are my. Uh, let's just next slide. I'll give a little yeah. cool. So there, there you are. Look, so there's wow. a tiny, tiny picture of Gary right there. <laughs> you can see him <laughs> this big. Yeah, and that's a, a little mushroom. So like, I'll talk about the pictures in a little bit, but I just figured just throw that in there because I'm really happy that, um, well, me and my beautiful other half there, we had this nice romantic photo shoot together in the woods. <laughs> it was it's nice. Superb. It's superb. It's, lovely. it's such a beautiful photograph. Your children will appreciate it so much. That they will. They will. My little, my little thirty, and my little sixty. <laughs> 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 Next slide, please. <laughs> oh, bus flash. Wait, tell me about this mushroom, though. I mean, this oh, one, tell me about what's going on in this in this I'll... picture because when you first showed me this. I couldn't believe it. It's incredible. Yeah, I know. There's a little secret secret thing I figured out with, with this. And it really is this lens that's allowed me to do it. So I've had these creative ideas um, that have been kind of held back a little bit because of the extension tubes, really. It's nothing to do with the, the 60 mil. The lens is amazing. But to get that magnification, we have to add certain things on. And then they diminish, you know, what we can do to some degree. Um, so, but, you know, it's like everything. When new stuff comes out, it removes some limitations. But yeah, I'll, I'll, this picture comes up again later on, so I'll talk about it in a little bit more detail later. Yeah, that's, uh, all right. But still not all telling right. you exactly what it's done. 
No, well, I mean, I, I tried to get it out of you the other day, but you weren't telling me. So. No, no, no. I go and figure it out in there. So, yeah, the, the, I guess, like, one of the biggest no things I noticed straight away with this, this this lens is just how incredibly close the focus is. So this picture here is one-to-one uh, -one with the 60 mil, And then the next one, where you just skip over to there, this is, like, the instantly how much closer we can get with no loss of light. And that is, like, the thing I'm most excited about. So just between those two images on their own, that, that in itself is astonishing. What we can do with this lens is, like you know, we can photograph at the other magnification, but what we can't do with the 60 is get into here. So like, that's why I love the flexibility of this thing. It's like, you know, it's from there to infinity, maybe beyond yeah. if you put a calculator on. I suppose I'd like you here, everyone. <laughs> And, and the thing, like, you, you kind of almost nailed it when you said, you know, you'll talk about that mushroom image later on. But mm -hmm. um, we've we've been putting extension tubes and magnifiers on lenses, and that's just the way we've been doing it. But they do – there is an impact, isn't there? There is a, there is a compromise, and there yeah. are, there's some things that you just can't – you can't achieve with them. Yeah, you know? and the thing is, and, like, if you want to photograph a springtail, for instance, and then you say if you wanted to maybe, you know, photograph a big mushroom – then we have to break our kit down with the other setup. But now we could just half click and half click and you just focus. <laughs> it's amazing. It's just a quick little movement on a switch is brilliant, isn't it? Oh, it's much better. It's much better. Flexibility is insane. But yeah, yeah we can go to the next one, I reckon. So yeah, this, this is this is this is one of my favorite subjects that you've done. It's not my favorite image because obviously we'll get to that, but this is amazing. It's the yeah, So this point, this picture is literally it's not technically perfect. This is just a grab shot just to illustrate what we can do. Um, when we start adding like the telegraphers onto this. So this is uh, like a single shot. I just about managed to get the focus like on the little stem in there. And it's inside of a raindrop. And this is in my garden. But if you look at the next one, right, it's, it's astonishing what we can do. Like that was a times two telegraphers. And I think it's about like 30 frames. It's a handheld stack. Um, but it's just bonkers. You know, the, and this is on my first day no. with, the, with the lens, you know. So I'm, I was still learning how to use it at this stage. But it's really... It kind of like <laughs> kicked the door open and like reinvigorated my passion and creativity again. So I'm just I'm hooked on it again. That was awesome. It's amazing that 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 you that you can achieve this. I mean, straight away, this is not something that everybody can achieve. There is a huge amount of skill that you've got to put into that as well, and it just proves. And I and I kind of used the the term the other day somewhere. This lens is almost like the Alice in Wonderland lens. It's like you really going into places that. You've not seen before. Look at the little twist on this mushroom. I know it looks and like a fiber there. optic cable, doesn't it, or something? It's, it's just, absolutely yeah, it's incredible. Astonishing. It's such a beautiful thing. This is a great image, Gail. One of my absolute favorites of, of your most really? recent. Yes. Oh, thank yes. you, man. I appreciate I love that. This one. I love it. I'm glad. Yeah, it's 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 a new. It's the start of a new journey for me. So I'm on this the whole new thing now with the old uh, macro thing. I'm trying to go for stories and interesting things. Um, and yeah, this was the beginning of it. And I couldn't do it beforehand like this. Um, I just couldn't do it. Like, and it's just um, that lens is just so much brighter. But we'll come to that in a second. This, well, I don't know even what's coming up next now. So it's a nice surprise for me as much as uh, everyone else. So yeah, would you agree that this is true? It's got unparalleled freedom and creativity, creative flexibility now, and that equals a happy guarantee in there. By the way, yeah, I, I would, I would definitely agree on the happy guarantee part of it because yeah, I, I have yeah. not. I think I've not. I mean, you, you are, you're always smiling anyway. But I don't think I've seen that smile reach quite as far as it has in the in the last couple of months, really. No, no, it's aching, <laughs> it's aching. <laughs> no, no, this is close to forty. It's going the other way. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So what if not? Like, I like to get these little sort of the miniature stories in the macro world now. So, like, normally I just go for like maybe either of those two subjects. But one of the things that we can do with this lens now is actually stop down beyond f6.3. Because if, like, I don't know what you found, Dave, but when you're shooting with the 60 and extension tubes, um, like f5.6, f6.3 is kind of like the limit before the image quality yeah. starts getting degraded. Absolutely. Yeah, I'd agree. That's, I mean, I would say to, without extension tubes, I'd never recommend going above f8. With a mon, 5.6.6.3 is really kind of pushing it. And that's the compromise, right? Yeah. So, like, and now we could be super flexible. So if you have a little look at the next one, um, I don't know which one's in focus. So there, I took a shot of the mushroom, and this is that I think it's about F11, F14, thereabouts. Yeah. And then I quickly just pulled the camera back uh, then for the next one, and then shot that one. And then we ended up with a two-image focus stack. Now, for me to get that sort of depth of field the other way around, it would have been 15, 20 images. 
Um, but that it's, thing would have moved. Is that the next image as well? Do we have that again? Yeah, yeah. Let's just to show yeah. I'm joking. Oh, no, it's not. There we go. We'll go, go back, back to it. There we there go. go. So that's the one that you can compose it to. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really just, quick. It's And it's incredible. And you're right. It's that, it's that, it literally is that story. It's creating this kind of... Um, this engagement where you're kind of looking into these two things and they're great you know i mean okay so sometimes slugs and snails are not the prettiest of creatures but you know they're kind oh, of mooching they're, around man, they're, they're these little things. little mushrooms yeah. anything's pretty That's with the macro lenses pointed out anything's if pretty with the macro. yeah but the thing is as well i think it's important to um and i think we'll probably talk about it as we go further down uh, the images but it's worth bearing in mind and people should be asking the question and having the debate with us and please feel free to put some questions in the chat here for for, for garant to talk about um, the fact that we can stop down now, we can stop down way more than you think as well, yeah, and get the yeah. quality right. This is exactly and this that. is this has shocked us all, hasn't it? Yeah, I didn't like. And the first day I had it, I was shooting it like the sixty mil because you have to kind of like you see learned behaviors and you see learned habits. Yeah. So initially, when I first put it on, I was like, oh, I'm not really seeing anything initially. But then I was like, I'm shooting in the same way though. So then I started exploring and pushing what the lens can do. And I was like, oh, my God, this is just its just so different. It's a bokeh it's machine. It's a bokeh yeah. machine as well. I'll show you later. But its it just creates bokeh all the time. It's, it's amazing it is. So, yeah, right, I think if you look at the other good. one, the next one along. This one? Yeah. So this mushroom is tiny. Uh, this thing is like the one in the back is like that, this big. You know, so that one is like teeny tiny and this mm. is a single shot you know i like that depth of field in the background i like that it's not entirely in, in focus it's just enough that it's illustrative isn't it um, yeah very much so it does it gives you a sense of sort of uh imposition of that yeah that. but that mushroom in the back looks like a giant compared to it this does. one we both know that they're both so tiny yeah and it's just so overhanging but that's the thing and we can shoot in single frames and this is one photo a single shot so like you just one and done you just click done and then you're off to the next one. And it's it's it removes like anxiety and stress and things about you that you worry, oh my god, is this stack gonna work? Is it am I gonna like miss yeah. it? Time consuming. And now it's just one shot at F14, and then it's like voila. It's just nice in it. You just but have let's to just, find but let's just reiterate where we are with that one. This is shot at F14. Mm. <laughs> I know we couldn't do that on the 60. Your you brain kind of goes. Uh, that doesn't work for me because what we're seeing is not what you traditionally think of as f14 but this is what macro does and this is what this level of magnification does right yeah and we're at 2x on you so this is as close as the sense will go this is that you know and the fact that we can do it in one photo i mean I, I did actually shoot like a like a six or eight image stack and i got the other one in but i just didn't like it aesthetically yeah i didn't like it it looked it was just it was a battle there and you know in photography i, I kind of like you know, the odd number thing to have one main focus point or three, you know, where you've got like a definitive subject in there. And if they were both in, they would have been like, they would have been competing. So like, I'm really excited about applying this kind of, um, this kind of approach to everything else now, like the bigger stuff, especially. Can you imagine a dragonfly? You can shoot its face at F14 or, and it's going to all be in one go. Yeah, like I can't great. wait. I can't wait. I think you made the right choice on the separation of subjects in this in this image. I think you absolutely nailed it on the head, as you as you usually do. You you your gut feeling on where to go with these is they're just superb as always. Go. Thank you, man. Next. Yeah. So I was. This is just a test image, really. This is the kind of thing where I was like, um, I was wondering if F three five would be enough for like background you know blur and diffusion and this this mushroom was like quite even this we're talking 15 feet away or something and you know that background was annihilated isn't it it's yeah, nicely yeah, soft and diffuse out. thrown out beautifully any less any more than that and you, you just don't need any more so i just thought i just test it out and it, it's just nice and that's a single image nice and ethereal it reminds me of one of those scenes from lord of the rings that we love <laughs> yeah know? like the, it's got that fantasy woodland theme yeah. thing you got that the colors in the back there so that those greens really you help that background color but it's so beautiful very yes, cool. this, is I, part, and this is why I get jealous of where you live as well because you, you have really good access to the beautiful Welsh woodlands and forests. Wales is the most beautiful place, but you, the thing is, you don't kind of have any internet really, <laughs> but it's worth it though. Because you, beautiful, yeah. you just can't connect with anybody. <laughs> Fantastic, I know. So, yeah, we have, I know. So, like, I started shooting these high mag scenes in under natural light just to kind of like push my kind of like abilities, really, and the, to, to push the sort of handheld stuff that we can do now. And of course, we got Sync IS, so that kind of helps. But what you must remember is, right, that this is this is twice as close now as we used to be. So, and it's longer. 
Yeah. So in theory, it should be wobblier and all these things. Um, this 180 mil, but it's also like really close up. So yeah, I think Dave, can you see the next slide there? Yeah. <laughs> all right, go back, go back in. <laughs> oh, yeah, so, so this, so this is a um, this is a natural light handheld focus stack of a, a tiny mushroom. We're talking millimeters. And um, this is no flash. It's like 400 ISO. And it's, I think I shot it like at 6.3 or something. But it's just astonishing. We don't need flash necessarily. As long as, you know, the subject is behaving itself like this mushroom was. So this is like a direct sunbeam. Yeah, sunbeam. Low, low angle light. And that's all it was. Yeah. Just natural sunlight. You know, we should photograph it like a like wildlife photography, isn't it? Like, yeah, absolutely. My, my wildlife photographer friends. I'm second in yeah. all that information. It's Channel, just, channeling it all. Yeah, and just pop that under there. But it's just 100% natural natural light, that one. That's pretty cool. So I think the, the rest of the series might just be all natural light shots now as well, which is interesting. I'm just going to pop a question up from um, Barry, which is it's a very valid question as well. Are we using the live view or the viewfinder for the fiery mushroom? Right, um, viewfinder. And um, I will confess, a lot of the time I can barely see through it. There's so much light in there that I'm, I've got light. I'm uh, not live view boost. That's on my Mark III. I've got night vision through my viewfinder. I'm pointing it in, and I'm literally just trying to like see the edges of the mushrooms, and then trying to like work my way back into a focus stack. So that is very it's kind of technically challenging. But if I could do it, you could. You'd be, you'd be fine. <laughs> you figure it out. <laughs> but yeah, viewfinder on that one. Perfect. Okay, springers. Yeah. Springers. Springtail. Yeah. So this is like you know, straight off the bat, I wish that the entire thing was in focus. Okay, but this is day one with the camera, and it was a bit frosty, and I went up to have a little look, see what was there. But you know, this is a springtail, and it's a single shot. I mean, that's that's the thing that I, they just surprised me, you know, and yeah. um, it like I didn't know at that stage, like I shoot at f fourteen, so I if I just shot it and stopped it down a little bit, it would have been fine. But, um, but but again, that comes down to that re that remembered behavior, isn't it? That we 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 don't think about going to that, which is why these discussions that we have these in in a public forum like this to say, hey, when you get it, don't think you have to run around shooting at f five point six all day. Yeah, and then getting yeah. frustrated that not even the springtail's eye is in focus. You know? I know, I know. But the thing is, like, it's that magnified as well, though. Like, yeah. I mean, with the sixty, we've got to put extension tubes on or Rainox or something, maybe even both to magnify to that stage. But we don't. This is just built into the lens now. And the, I, I just, it's just, it's cool. It's just cool. It's cool. It's just cool. It's just, it's just cool. cool. Let's see what else yeah. we got. Um, okay, it's so what I'm doing at the moment thing. as well, just so that everybody knows, is I'm, I'm saving up some comments as well. So what we'll probably do is we'll get to about halfway through. We get to about half seven, and then we'll pull up, go through some comments, and then we'll go back to the images. If that's all right with you. Yes. <laughs> I'm yes. 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 As long as the, you're like you're like as long as there's a biscuit at the end, I don't care. <laughs> I've got it. And I know I'm, it's in my line of sight. All right, and I'm so desperate to eat it, but I got this mic and it's just gonna crunch around the world. So I'm just gonna, <laughs> no, no, you're not to eat. No, at the I'm end, the, the, the biscuit is your reward at the end. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> all I'm right, excited. let's look. Oh yes. Tell and me this is it. honestly, dude. This is just about keeping things as simple as possible. Like. um Macro photography has got this, and it is highly technical sometimes, but it's as technical as you want to make it, right? And um, I, I'm just concerned that it might be off-putting for like people who are just new to maybe trying to get into the macro world. But I mean, so you can get really interesting images, and this is just a single shot in the natural light, aperture priority mode, as simple as you can get, 400 ISO. You just point it at something cool, use a little bit of backlight, and that's all it takes. And um, you can build from there then if you decide that you want to maybe get a little bit more technical but it's just um don't don't let the technicality or the illusion of technicality get in the way of like actually just getting out there and having some fun because that's what the photography is about yeah i mean i think you've nailed it on the head really when you started the the this this live saying it. it's it's about new levels of creativity and that's should that's be the main focus right is the creativity yeah well that's the that's the way you get the images that are yours you know, if this your creative input makes your yeah. images look different to everybody else's. So yeah. it's just it just makes sense to just don't be afraid of like failure. Don't just play and get things wrong. I mean, nobody's there, nobody's looking. Just, How many times as well that we've had conversations between me and you and said, Yep, yeah, went out all day. How many images do you get? None. Absolutely. Zero. Maybe halfway to one if we're lucky. It happens all the <laughs> yeah, time. Exactly. Yeah, it's and just it's normal. Accepting it. Yeah, it's part of the fun. And like even the ones that you that tech you know they might not be correct or they, you might not get anything but you're gonna learn something from it and in many ways that has more value really than nailing one shot you know just don't be afraid to experiment and just 
faff around like we could do it and we're yeah. in like where we just you know we're all we've been looked at you know and like my livelihood depends on a lot of it yeah. and even then i'm like ah go have fun play because it's it's just it should be fun if, if if it's not fun we're doing something wrong exactly no i agree with you whoa oh, another, I know. One, another one of my favorite ones as well i love this it's simple though you know what it is natural light wide open and we've got in camera stacking with me so and i really put to use the compression that we get in from the 180 mil you know it blows those backgrounds away and it's an in-camera focus stack there's 15 images I, differentials like three or four and then yeah. like with the system you can literally just point and click and it'll just do it for you it's really nice so all we have to do is just I play what we want and then use the gear to help us along the way there. And this is the thing as well. I think we, it's really important that, because me and you, we talk about Flash a lot and we talk about Flash solutions between ourselves because that's yeah. a big part of what we do. But I think people forget that we do also shoot natural light. We shoot without that Flash because some circumstances just call for it. Like the look is completely different, yeah. you know, when you want the background. Like with this one, it's the, the background and the front foreground colors are just so superbly matched. It's brilliant. Thank you, man. And I tell you, like, even when I'm using flash, I'm trying my best to hide it, though. So I, like, when I'm shooting, I usually shoot, like, four ISO with a low flash because I'm trying to get a naturalistic look anyway. And the flash yeah. is really there just to kind of, like, freeze action and that kind of stuff. But, yeah, it's cool, though, isn't it? Just a nice little time. But we can all do that now. Like, it's not, like you grab your lens, grab your camera, go out. You can just do this now. Say dry just a, a quick point. <laughs> yeah. A quick question from Andy that I'll pull in aside from the starred ones just because it's uh, in the line of thought that we're talking about now. And Andy's talking about it. Does the in camera stack produce a final JPEG or RAW? Garrett, go for it on the answer on this one. All right. Yeah. So the camera will shoot a sequence of uh, RAW images. You can set it between three and 15 um, for the, in the focus stacking. And then it'll produce those images together for a JPEG. But it does actually maintain all the RAW files. So you can then go ahead and process them later if you wanted. And it's really handy having those RAWs, even if you're going to use like the uh, the created stack. It's yeah. handy to have those RAWs as a backup, isn't it? Because sometimes I think what we sometimes do is share that on you know socials and stuff that JPEG really instantly, yeah. And then go back and sort of yeah faff around again with the RAWs. Yeah, exactly. And can you imagine like you know traditionally before we had the, this is tech built into our cameras, you would shoot the focus stack, you go in your house, <laughs> you'd like load them all up, you'd process them, you'd re you'd be like this pleading with the photography gods that it's all going to work and then you find out that it didn't sometimes and then the opportunity is gone but like the jpeg for me is as much it's just a confirmation like instantly yeah. i know there and then that it's going to work before i yeah. even get home so but then and then you could just share it straight from the field onto like the emails instead whatever it is going you could just shoot it share it in about five minutes it's, it's really cool it works on shoot, landscape. And, shoot and share it, right? That's going to be the theme of my next OM Image Share app video. So we talk oh, about using the app. We perfect. should do the app video together, and you can shoot it and share it straight away. Oh, no, straight like from... <laughs> 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 it's going to be the catch line. It's going to be the catch line. But no, it's yeah, absolutely nice. perfect. Uh, okay, let's look at the next one. Oh, there it so is. Good, man. So, yeah, th this I took this on, but this was my first day with the camera. This was genuinely my first day with the lens, sorry. I went out and um, I thought, you know, I gotta, I have to try it with natural light because I just want to see what I can get, you know. And um, the stars aligned for this shot, and I learned a lot from it. I, I, I learned something about light there and how to effectively use it. And it, it looks like a blaze of fire, don't it? It, it it honestly yeah. it's so cool it is so cool yeah, it's not and i'm so thing. disappointed that you still won't tell me exactly how you did it i ain't saying <laughs> it man. no i keep it a secret for a while but i will say though i'm extending the challenge for everybody to go out and figure it out though because i want you to go out and play so if i just sell if i just say there's no curiosity there so i want you to go out and try and do it figure out for yourselves and have a little bit of fun along the way that's fair that's absolutely yeah. fair um <laughs> Okay. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, so this one is really is a it's a it's a feat of technical dominance, man. Like this is a single shot. Okay, it's at f eleven. It's at a quarter of a second in the under natural light, handheld. It's I nice, mean, it? it's just crazy. Look, look how much is in focus. It's just done. No stack is no think flash. Part of that really, I suppose, if we think about because we're used to using the sixty millimeter macro, right? Mm. Which obviously we're we're relying solely on the body IS for whatever happens. But now we've got that sync is yeah. we're, we're generating another another stop yeah really a stop and a half depending on which model, which model you're on and i mean i think i don't know how much i drink a lot of coffee i don't think i could do a quarter of a second no i'm to be honest with you I, like i am kind of 
lucky in this day. I've got pretty steady hands, but um, I, I shoot like this, and I've been shooting this way for years. So it is something you get used to. You know, you you hold the camera long enough, you spend so much time with it, you just get used to holding it. And then I just think you just get a little bit stronger, and you just get more technically used to holding it, maybe. Yeah. But yeah, but I, it's just insane that I can do it. You know, it's, it's half a second, and it's Crazy. that close up. And that's the thing that you know, the closer you get to your subjects, the wobblier things get. You know, and yeah, right. so you, you need tiny little movement, and it's like this on the other side. Yeah, yeah. and I, like I did have to take about ten goals though. It was it wasn't like one shot. You know, I, I took. I was there clicking, and I was like, "Okay, I'm getting this." We're supposed but to tell it, them that this was the first shot, and that was it. Oh, I'm the best in the world. That was why I didn't. I didn't even look through. I just pointed and clicked it. You even just roughly pointed it in the direction of of that. Snap. Yeah, just, just like that, said, right? I didn't even leave the house. I just the camera walked up on, on his own and did it for me. Yeah, I think we might. I think we might be pushing it a bit too far. <laughs> no, it's really it's true. No one like. Oh, fantastic! That's amazing. <laughs> That's yeah. brilliant. I love that one. And obviously, I love the refraction of the image in the background with the woodlands. That's so yeah. cool. It's, it's, uh, it's like, again, imagine if I shot at a sunset, though, and you had that like, light beam, and it was just a bit more. But I wanted to go for a Rob Cartle kind of high-key vibe, so I overexposed it on purpose as well to like, simplify it. Yeah, shout out to Rob as well. He's robbing the, he's Rob here. He's robbing the comments. Give us a shout out, Rob, if you're watching. Rob, you in? You in? There's a biscuit if you're in. Little treat. You get a biscuit. <laughs> if, 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 if Rob walks through that door behind you now, because I know that Rob knows where to find you, he will. <laughs> that would be amazing. So, yeah. You smell the biscuits from Carmarthen. He's on his way up. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. Um, oh, okay. So uh, yeah. these are this is Chinese lanterns, isn't it? Yes. Thank you for remembering. Yeah. <laughs> I just forgot. Yes. So yeah, this lens, man, is a light machine. It just sucks in light. I think it's, I don't know if it's true. So I won't actually, I won't say it because I don't know if it's true, but it does appear to me that it just, there's just more light coming in. And I photographed this yesterday. I went out for a little walk around um, my local areas, like, and um, do you know when you have, usually when you go taking pictures, you expect to have a bad day. And then every now and then, once every 15 years, you have a day where everything just goes to plan. I had one of those days yesterday. So it was really fun. So I shot this and this is a single shot. Natural light, f wide open, and it's wow. like it's all it is though. It's just a little bit of lighting and a cool subject. It's but it's there's not like it's not a ton that we have to like do anymore. And of course, this will autofocus now, so we can you can autofocus, and that is a, a huge huge advantage. Like I think, it I think it is as well. We're we're lucky that we've got autofocus through the range from not only obviously two times and one times, but you know right through because this is this is an infinity lens. You know you can use it for. Yeah. For anything that you want to at that 90 mil focal length but yeah yeah autofocus and speedy speedy is nice thing yeah it is really fast and considering it's longer i was like you know i was slightly concerned to be honest with you that the the autofocus might be a bit handy and um it's fine honestly it's, it just behaves as like a normal lens um yeah which is unheard of in macro it's, 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 it's i don't know they've done it the only problems I, I've had so far with the autofocus on this one is when I wasn't paying attention and I was too close. I was beyond the closest focusing yeah. distance because you think I'm going to get right in on top of that. Yeah. And then you look and you think, well, actually, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm too close. Yeah, yeah oops. <laughs> no, it's cool, though, isn't it? There we go. And this is another natural light shot. You know, this is um, a snail in my garden. And the thing is, with macro photography, you don't have to travel far. You can step outside or even stuff inside your house. You point your macro lens out, it's going to look pretty cool. Um, but having somewhere accessible that you can visit, in, you know, um, under the right conditions is really, really cool. So this is, um, the sun was setting. I was in, the, I got like a little wooded patch at the bottom of my garden. So I went in there and I found this snail just poodling along and I just got the camera, the back lit it, aperture priority, and I shot it at um, one shot at F11. And then we got that, you know, so... Um, it's just timing it really, you know, with shots like that, you you want to get them so they they look interesting and well defined. And I just love that his eye is a full such stretch. A dramatic, cool shot. I mean, it's got such a for me, you know me, I'm a I'm a real nerd. This has got a real Star Warsy feel for me. Yeah, it's got so a Star I look at it and I go, it's got a real Star Warsy yeah. jab of the hot feel going on. You can see the shell. You can see all the, the markings on the shell. You can see this guy's eye. It's such a cool thing. You know, and I can hear the Cantina song in my head. It's such an amazing image. But <laughs> yeah. the, the, this is the thing, though, is that the, the images are, are supposed to create this reaction, aren't they? To whatever, everybody reacts differently. But this is, you know, 
testament to how how experienced you are at finding these guys as well you know thank you yeah the, you start the thing is there is a difference between the subject and a photo opportunity and the more time you spend out there you re, kind of like you see the difference between them so like you, that snail could have been elsewhere and it wouldn't have been a photo opportunity it would just been a really cool snail to look at but every now and then you'll just see oh my god the way that light is hitting that is going to be amazing and it's uh, a little it's like a little claire, claire says it's amazing claire williams says nice backlight and i would agree yeah it's, it's, back, it's i love beautiful. backlighting i love backlighting yeah this is it's really cool um I want to I want to stop us here on this amazing uh, image, just fantastic. And uh, some of these some of these are the ones that I haven't seen of yours yet, obviously, because when we spoke last, you hadn't quite finished putting them together. So some of these I'm reacting to for the first time. Oh, that's nice. Um, and I want to go across. I'm just going to pop this out for a second. Okie dokie. And let's have a look at some questions uh, and 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 pick up on what people are, are saying here. So uh, Stephen Barlow is asking us what the focus range is when the lens is in S macro. So he knows it goes to two to one, but what he doesn't know is what is the minimum magnification in S macro. So have you had a chance to play around with that S macro section a lot? Yeah, I've been in there, but I, I don't think I can answer that as well as you, maybe you might be able to be honest with. So, I mean, I've, I've done a few zooms now, uh, introducing it and showing off what it can do just with OM capture software in the studio and things like that. And using the S macro range is literally like letting us go between one to one and two to one. So it's really kind of locking us out at, in that end of things. Um, you can only achieve two to one in S macro. You can't achieve it in any other focus limit point anyway. Um, but it really is giving you that confined, that short amount of focus and distance. And that's where you really kind of, where it plays onto itself because you're limiting the amount of areas that it can focus on. It can't go ahead to infinity and it, and it can't come any nearer because it physically can't do that anyway. So one to one to two to one in S macro would be the answer there. I think Stephen. Um, oh, Okay, so a couple of just cool comments. Uh, John is looking forward to his pre-ordered 90 mil uh, and has some jewelry jobs lined up, oh, wow. which will be ideal. Terrific. So that's really interesting. Uh, Andrew Fusick Peters is in. Hey, Hello, Andrew. Hi, mate. How are you doing? Hey, Great we, need, we need that cover yeah. when I see you next, man. We need, a couple. <laughs> we get we get we need to get everybody together i think that's the that's the whole oh, thing there yeah. is another comment later down as well uh asking about stuff like that so we'll bring it up nice um Ushrula is saying did you say 90 mil with a two times telly oh earlier on yeah yeah 90 with a times two right? and it goes in so close like um springtails they f literally fill the frame at that they're like it is at f10 um which is fine honestly there's still no depth of feel at f10 yeah but if, if we're going down there with it the i think I'd recommend a flash at that level, unless if if, if it's like a living being that's moving around it and it's gonna maybe like not stay still, uh, go for a flash on there because it it it, it needs to be wobbling around a bit like as well. <laughs> But it's and insane. Think, um, we we obviously need to say as well that when you put the telly on, it's f10, and that and you you don't have a choice. The camera is automatically putting you to the start point of f10, mm. and this is where I think we were surprised, wasn't it? Because we went, oh, actually. The quality doesn't. It's designed to work at that magnification oh, at dude, and it's sharp. quality. It is that lens is ridiculous. It is so sharp. I had to put gloves on to handle my files. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, oh, it's, it's bonkers, fantastic. man. It's, it's it's amazing. Fantastic stuff. Um, Amanda's it. Amanda Graham's in. Hi, Amanda. We know Amanda very well. Amanda described it to someone the other day as a yeah. microscope for the outdoor world. That's exactly it. That's a perfect yeah, magnification. Yeah. Is immense. Yeah, it's perfectly described. Um, here's here's a good one. I think from uh, Brandon, who's asking what what else would you photograph besides macro with a ninety mil? Yeah. Do you know what? So it's one hundred eighty mil. So I've actually been working on photographing birds in my garden with it. Like um, I haven't got any like really interesting shots that I want to like share yet. But it's one hundred eighty. So I'm getting like headshots of birds from like really close up now. Um, you could use a portrait, I guess, if if that's your thing. Yeah. Dave, what do you reckon? Anything else there? I mean, I think, yeah, portraiture is definitely in there. Um, I think, you know, to be honest with you as well, close crop uh, landscape, if you really want to go for mm -hmm. it, you know, I mean, if you're thinking about um, a, a narrower field of view for some landscapes, maybe things like, you know, lighthouses and rock formations and things like that, it create really nice uh, portrait aspect stuff, I think. Oh man, yeah, and it, and you can like still stack in landscapes and things like that. So yeah, really yeah, you can yeah. still stack as well. You know, still oh, stack. Wow. It's biscuits. Yeah, biscuits. biscuits. You could always shoot biscuits as well. Product photography. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Uh, <laughs> 
Okay, here's a good one for you as well from Charlie and, 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 and Dana who come in a lot. What differential settings are you using for focus stacking and bracketing? So if it's bracketing and your subject is going to stay still and you've got you know enough time really, you can group it quite close together, like two or three, and just shoot like loads of frames to make sure that it's covered. Um, but for stacking, it does depend on the size of the subject really. Um, but in like the ideal world, I try to get like 15 frames and traditionally, well, with a 60 actually, it'd be 15 at f5.6, but now I'm just going to try and get like two at f14. <laughs> but, but the differential, I trip to stick about five, four or five. Um, I find that if I go beyond that, then I get like, um, what is it, focus banding, I guess is the best thing I can call it, where it's just this missed yeah. bits of depth of field in there. Yeah, yeah, no, it's exactly what it is. You get those. Uh, well, what are your settings, dude? What, like, what are you? I mean, I think I probably, yeah, I mean, it'd be very similar to yours. I think if I was shooting, I'd definitely bring the differential down. The more magnification we get, I'd bring the differential down a little bit. So, yeah, differential of two. Uh, we used to shoot on the 60. So if we shot on the 60 with nothing else on it, it was dead easy. 15 shots, f5.6, yeah. f5 differential. Just leave it in and it, and it, it run and go. But yeah, the more you magnify, I think you just need to be careful in the differential so that you don't get those massive jumps because that's where that banding occurs, isn't it? When yeah. it jumps too far and the depth of field doesn't cross over. Yeah, it looks a bit weird. I think we're identical. Yeah. Oh, that's Andy. That's good. Yeah, it's always good. <laughs> it's good when we agree, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's good. <laughs> um, oh, here we go. Here's one for you. Helen says that your 90 mil is actually hers and she wants it back. Never. Come and get it. <laughs> 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 Catch me if you can't have it. Yeah, yeah. You, can't have it. you can't have it. You can prize no. it from my cold dead fingers. Yeah. <laughs> and um and Deborah uh wants to know if these were straight out of the camera raw or JPEG uh or processed a bit. And wow, wow, oh, wow. No. Oh, thank you. Thanks for the wow wow wows. <laughs> but you know, these are these are um processed raws and I I process them in Lightroom and Photo and Photoshop. But I did actually just today I bought uh I bought Helicon because um Ooh. I had a uh, yeah. Because I had some some issues there with my um, the way Photoshop was working, so I bought Helicon today, and it just seems to be. I need to jump between two of them, and that's what I realised. So yeah, I got Helicon's out. fun though; it's a it's a fun piece of software to use. And of course, don't forget, you know, for those that don't want to touch any of these external ones, we can do the stacking in OM workspace. Oh, perfect! Yeah, and it's we'll pretty. It's that. like nice, uh, yeah. Because especially if you're new to it and you don't want to like spend extra money. Yeah, try it that way. And, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. If you're brand new to it and you want to just test out how it works, own workspace, free bit of kit. Let's go for it. A lot of the others have free trials as well, but ultimately, if you do get hooked on it, you've got to pay for it in the end. But works works. Helicon's all... fast, isn't it? It's really fast. Oh, God, it's, fast, yeah. Yeah. it's yeah. much yeah. faster than Photoshop. And that's why it was like, oh, cool. Like, it can like eat, get back outside and do it a bit quicker. So exactly. that's, that's what we're really doing. The thing with that kind of software as well is that it's it's just got one job. So it's that's all of its processing power is just doing that oh, one job, isn't yeah, it? True. Yeah. And like, so I'm learning the ins and outs. So yeah, like I'm, I'm not sharing too much about it uh, because I don't know it very well. <laughs> so we'll see. Fair enough. Um, okay. Tim says, can't wait for this lens to arrive. So glad that OM system made this a pro lens with a manual focus. Yeah. Clutch. IS and sync and compatible with teleconverters. Brilliant. It really does tick all the boxes, doesn't it? It, it really does. has just gone. They've come in and gone, uh, well, we could give it everything, so we did. Honestly, and it feels like, honestly, you know, even if, uh, like, we were in the system, but I, I think that even if you're outside of, like, our camera system, it's just, if you just wanted, like, a dedicated macro thing, it's worth it, just it, because there's nothing else like it. it it's just astonishing. It is, it is now, I think, if you wanted to build that as a macro system, if you had other stuff yeah. to do, and you but genuinely honestly, just wanted that kit. It's fun to use. Like, the, the focusing is just, like, like it's smooth. And at the 60, you're, like, wheeling <laughs> it around. I got a little hamster that I've trained to, like, kick it around for me. But, like, yeah, look. Oh, it's smooth. Manual focus clutch. Oh, and it's, it's beautiful. Click, 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 click it some more for me. Just a bit more. There you go. Okay, we're gonna to have to move on, otherwise, we'll 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 be staring, uh, clicking it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Graham, uh, has aimed this. I'm hope I'm well, I'm sure it's aimed at you. Are you gonna do any workshops in 23? Yes, yeah. Um, if if it is me, then yeah, I usually kick them up again in April. I wait for the like the weather to kind of clear and uh, there's more subjects around, so it'll be a bit nicer day for everyone. But yeah, if you wanted, like, if you if, if you're you know, like me, a bit impatient, yeah, you can kick it off sooner but yeah i usually start off in april when it's a bit warmer and nicer brilliant 
brilliant stuff. Uh, Barry's said that you're Welsh, so you can achieve anything. And I would have to agree, uh, oh, which is Barry. a fantastic vote for the Welsh there. Fantastic, Barry. Thank you so much. Is Barry Welsh as well? Is well, I, would, I, would, I, would, I mean, I would assume so. He's probably very biased, but it's a, it's a, it's a statement I can agree with. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, have we got with something about us? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the, the last one before we go back to your presentation, I think, is uh, from Trevor. When shooting these handheld single shots, are you using CAF or SAF? Well, I think Trevor's probably missed missed out the main one, hasn't he? CAF? I'm I think sometimes. you probably using a lot of the time using MF as well. No. No, I used oh, to. Not with the 60, honestly, dude, with yeah. the 60, you nail it there, Trev. Yeah, like, um, now we've got this this one. Um, I'm, using, I'm using CAF. And the reason being that even at a... You're like this, right? Even if it doesn't appear that you're moving, you've got micro movements, and like you only have to move like a millimeter, and the, your subjects will be out of focus. So the CAF will just make uh, will compensate for those micro adjustments as well. So I use that one. Amazing, amazing. That's really good to hear, though, because obviously, again, it comes back to uh, remembered behaviors where you just thought, I'll put in a manual focus, we'll hit one to one, and I'll wobble backwards and forwards. You know, that's how I'm going to do it. That's uh, it, yeah. But it's so good to hear that you are using that AF on those pro lens. So uh, okay, cool. So I'm going to bring back, I'm going to bring this back to Jabba. Uh, <laughs> Jabba uh, I'm going to change his name on the internet now. You know, that's Jabba the slug. <laughs> Jabba nice. the slug. I love it. <laughs> Such a cool dude. Uh, we'll bring this onto the next slide from you. Oh, here we go. A bunch of images from yesterday. And I, brought, I threw these in. And like, it was last minute. I basically, like, like a, a kid, naughty kid with his homework. Like, I had to just restructure the end bit of this because I actually learned a lot yesterday. Because I went out and and I went out basically just for a nice day out, and I just took the camera with me. But then it just turned out to be interesting, and and I learned a lot about the lens. So like, these images aren't necessarily there to show that wow, these are some cool pictures from Gary. They're really there to show us what's possible, um, even at an entry level. Because yeah. it's really cool. So, yeah, so the bees and the crocuses were out yesterday, so I had a bit of fun with those. Here we go. Nice. So look at this little crocus, all right, um, with a bee on there. And um, my partner, she said, it looks as though that we've, like, peeled a little petal down, and then we've got a little shy bee going, oh, no, don't look at me. Bit of camera shy. Okay, like. You've kind of, like, opened his front door and gone, hey, what are you doing? Yeah, but what is interesting is, right, this is um, natural light, um, um, CAF, and it's a single shot, and it's really impulsive. And like normally, I'm missing these kind of spontaneous shots because either the focus didn't quite nail it, or I didn't nail it, or there's something going on, or I've got a flash system. But like this is just nature, natural light, um, aperture priority mode. And I, I think I just shot it at f14. But even there, look, there's not a ton of depth of field, but yeah. it's, it's spontaneous, and it, it taught me something. So then from there, and the rest of the day, I kind of like started experimenting a little more. Okay, should we get the next one? Yeah, I don't know what it is. So we'll see. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> I love this. This it's is cute, fantastic. isn't it? This oh, is man. Fantastic. It reminds me of Cartman off of South Park. Like, I love him. <laughs> but, I don't know. I've got this, like, his Winnie the Pooh in the, in yeah. the honey, kind of with his backside hanging out there. This is fantastic. So, so cool. So I'm trying to get stories in my shots, you know, funny little quirky moments or anything. Just, you know, like, I didn't want to get a, a bee, like, looking into the lens and, you know. But I love those images, but I'm just, I'm just experimenting. But the thing is with this, we got a longer focal length, which means I can be slightly further away. So I'm not really intruding really on the bugs. Yeah. And also, I, I I don't have to like get as close. So that means that I'm going to get to the moments quicker, if that makes sense, because I'm not missing anything. And it auto-focused. And, um, but I composed it as best as I could. So I wanted, you know, the, for these to be the staggered effect, you know. So like my, my rule is to pre-compose and then then get your shot. So I tried yeah. to like I find the composition, ignore what the bees do, and even though it looks amazing, get try to make it look reasonably pretty first. And um, yeah, this is a single shot again under natural light, and um, I just got a funny little story to it. It just makes me chuckle all the time. I it's crazy. It. You know those crocuses in the background just look de deliriously painted. They, They're yeah. just so beautifully smooth, aren't they? And you know what's interesting, right? This is like harsh natural sunlight. And um, it's just this, I, I don't know what it is. This lens just seems to render colors really, really well. I don't know if yeah. it's like the coatings or something, but um, I'm, I'm barely touching these. I'm, I'm not, you know, these are just editing Lightroom, you know? I'm not doing like crazy stuff to them, but it's just really nice lighting and the colors are just rendered nicely. And I think having that flexibility to stop down, it just, 
they're suggestive, you know, they're not completely out of focus. So, like shooting at 2.8, they just would have been obliterated. But having that extra depth of field, it just makes them look a bit more painterly, don't it? And, it? and it leads you into that story, you know, very much like the Mushrooms did as well. It's 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 such a super <laughs> emotive that, image. Man, yeah. you know that he's just going to smash that floor in a bit, hop off to the next one, <laughs> it's and then make there. his way up to the, the Goliath. He's rubbing his face in there, really having a good time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he's like, oh, what's his name? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Okay, right. Let's because <laughs> I just I hang on to these these cool pictures for far too yeah, long. It's we, nice, we, man. We've got such limited time, but we'll go for the next one. This is also super cool as well. Yes, yeah, the same bee, but he's climbing into this now, and the sun is starting to set, right? So the flower's closing. But you see, it, like I thought, well, this is a reasonably okay shot, but this is just to illustrate the next one, really. Like you see down the bottom there, my stacking technique didn't quite go to plan. Look, see the grass kind of going the way. But I like um, if I was really going for it, I would have noticed that. Um, and then just reshot it, but this is just to illustrate the next one, really. So this is like a distance shot that we can get with the um, with the lens. But then I put it into like the S mode setting, right? And then shot an in-camera focus stack. It's 15 images handheld, and let's just see what we ended up with, right? Ba, ba, ba. It's, it, it's great. It's great. You know, Absolutely it's a funny fantastic. little picture. But look at that. Look at this. Yeah, that's the flexibility oh. we've got with this lens. Can we just? Can we just? I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back. Yeah. So we're going from this. Yeah, and then same lens, same kit, same setup, no faff, no faff. I didn't even change the differentials or anything. I just shot it again. Unbelievable. Yeah, I didn't change Absolutely anything. So this is like, this is what I'm saying. Like, if you're new to the old macro world, uh, like, just there's nothing really holding us back. Just go and shoot. Like, this is aperture priority mode in daylight, in this in camera stacking. Just, just risk it and have some fun, you know. But Super. I love that man. I love that little foot. <laughs> the little bits of pollen that's on him it's cute but you've anthropomorphized this this beard you've triggered everybody's funny bone as well because you know you. brian's saying he'd call that shot behind oh but, 10 it, 10 biscuits for, 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 for brian don't count on this one okay and then and then yeah, you know people, come in. people saying this the crocus and the bee bomb photo being awesome <laughs> absolutely awesome thank you you know and it's it's so true it is so true um amanda i mean there there is so much Kudos coming to oh, you. you guys are I can't than... show everybody saying such cool things. We've got a lovely um, community, haven't we? To be fair, like, fantastic. Amanda wants, Amanda wants these on the wall. So, so Garen's ah. going to price, price these up tonight. Okay. So, you'll see him on his website tomorrow. Really One cool. million dollars. <laughs> 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 so fantastic. <laughs> um, do you want me to go to the next one? Let's go. Oh, they, they just get better, man. This is one of my favorite shots recently, to be fair. But I, I kind of had like a little, um, this is natural light, a hand, a hand held in camera stack. You know, it was at a thousand ISO. It was, like, it was pretty windy. And I was just holding my breath, waiting for everything to stop. But that'd be climbed in, man. And when the sun was starting to set, it just the flower closed around him. And he stayed in there for ages. He managed to like crawl back out again later but he was in there for ages i had plenty of opportunities but like that is such a cool little moment isn't it that's beautiful it really is it's such a stunning image uh yeah i'm, I'm amazed absolutely amazed move well moving on to a very different subject yeah this is my first ever photograph of a common lizard it's my first ever shot of a lizard in the uk and the only reason i got a lizard to shot at all is because i was lucky to go to the amazon there's millions of them but um <laughs> <laughs> this this little one was if you look on my um instagram today i posted a little reel so if you're not on instagram it's on for facebook as well but please go look at it because this this little lizard was fast asleep in the in the bark of a tree and i i was totally lucky that i managed to just see it this spot and it was so well camouflaged and um i was really really grateful for the fact that i had this extra focal length in there because right. it means That's I could be respectful to it. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And I wasn't, I was like really concerned that it'd like spook it away. But what's interesting about this is I, it's a single shot, but I had to shoot at 2000 ISO under natural light. Yeah. And I was like, I would not, it, I would not have guessed. I would not have guessed. No, it no, it's bonkers, man. Like, and um, it's the, that lens is so sharp. You know, I applied some noise reduction, of course, after it. I think I, in, I put up to like 30 and something. In Lightroom, yeah. so the, obviously I added some of that today. But I mean, this was impossible, and it right. was like really, it was, it was like 
a fiftieth of a second or something. You know, it's 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 astonishing what we can do now. And it's a, it's a stark reminder that these beautiful creatures live in the UK. You know, we quite often forget that that we have these. It, I mean, it's like a little like a little dragon coming out of his egg, really, isn't it? It's such a it it's such like cool. A, it regard. is. Um, mother actually said it reminds her of the um, he's you know in Jurassic Park with the little raptor yeah pokes out yes. of the egg. It's like we spread no it's French. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. And it was at Richard Attenborough giving him a little coochie coochie. Awesome. Coochie, 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 coochie. Oh, I'll watch that later now. I'm going to pop it on with the hot chocolate. Like, no, that's it now. We've been in mind. <laughs> yeah, best movie in the world. Yeah. I love it. Lovely. Right, let's I think see. I, oh, there we, there we go. That's me with the day there one. He is. There he is. That's the last shot of my little series there. Um, But yeah, I will be out. I'm going to be out every single day with this thing. Um, So yeah, stay tuned. I've got some creative ideas that I'm working on. And, um, yeah, that was just, the most amazing set of photographs. I have to just say that you know, I know that you haven't had a great deal of time on it, and that as with all of us, I think that have had the lens that we are daily learning. Yeah. But nevertheless, there's some amazing photos. Thank you, man. And like going through this kind of like stage where I'm like, I, I guess we all we go through these now, where you kind of like you hit like a, a crossroads or whatever, and you just think, well, I gotta like try to do things differently now. I'm trying to develop some creativity and things like that so i'm really yeah and this this lens is it's the thing that i've been missing really and um and i, I just love it i just honestly i can't speak highly enough of it amazing yeah should we um we'll take a few more uh we've got we've got about eight minutes left so oh, we take a few wicked. more questions lovely and uh before we get booted off uh, um uh, after the hour let's see what we can see if we can fill some people in with some stuff um lovely. Okay, so I'm going to give you this one first because it's directly related to you. Garant, how do you find the balance with the OM1 body and this lens? Do you ever use a grip for balance? Oh, no, it's beautifully well balanced. It's not that it's not that heavy, but actually and a little bit of weight is useful when you're hand-holding, to be honest with you. If it's too light, there's nothing to kind of like work against. So I find it beautifully well balanced. I don't use a grip, and that's because a lot of my subjects are kind of close to the ground. Um, and if that extra space there limits my compositional stuff, but I do carry spare batteries in my pocket, um, in, yeah, amongst all the biscuits. So yeah, that's the reason I don't use a grip. But if that's not a concern of yours, yeah, a grip is a good idea. I think there was another comment as well further up that I didn't grab hold of quick enough, but it was asking whether or not the EM1X plus this lens would be a weighty issue. But I think it comes down to what you're used to. So if you're yeah. used to handling an EM1X, the the lens it, it, it's it, it doesn't. It's not as heavy as it looks, right? It's nowhere near as um, as weighty as you think it is, particularly if you sort of look at images. Because of the material, I think, that's, that they're made of, the pro lenses. Yeah, yeah. And like, and the thing is that that X is, is built for like the longer lenses too. So yeah. it'll be really well balanced on it as well. Yeah. Um, I'll take the question from Tate, who's asked what S macro is. Um, S macro is super macro. It's the most magnification that the lens could achieve on the focus limiter switch. So uh, with the, just the lens on its own, S macro takes us up to two to one reproduction ratio, two times magnification, two X. Um, and then also in S macro, if you apply the two times teleconverter, that gives us four times. So that's what S macro is. It's something that we've obviously never had before because we've only had the up to one to one. Um, super macro, I like that. Super macro. Da, 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 da. That's gonna be my new three. Should have worn capes. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I've got, yeah. I've got my, I've got my superhero mask. I could have put on as well. Um, Piers, <laughs> I'm not sure I should be showing this. I think I might have just stitched Piers up, and uh, they have, have the, the the authorities knocking on his door. He said he's got a couple of bank jobs lined up, so he should be pre-ordering soon enough. Ooh, so well, I'm not gonna comment yeah, on that. Throw that one away. <laughs> <laughs> We don't condone any naughty activity in order to get no. this lens. Just to say, just to. But the lens, the lens is worth the risk. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> don't do it. Don't do it. Don't can do it. say that. I can't say that. <laughs> no, no, no. My poodle was looking nervous so when they came in. I was like, "You're up for sale, mate." <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Um, Barry's Barry says uh, is asking with the two times converter, even using a diffuser, are we going to get shadows with on-camera flash? Um, it depends how you mount the flash, really. So, like, um, a lot of guys I know are using the this new Cygnus tech. So that diffuses our light there quite nicely. Um, you'll get some sort of, like, shadow fall off. But if you can, if your light is from above the subject, slightly pointing down, that should disperse the light nicely for you. It just depends how you get it. If it's, like, front-mounted, then, yeah, I can see that you'll get some, like, lighting issues there. But if it's, like, on the top, it should be okay. Yeah. What do you think? I'd 
No, I, yeah. see, I completely agree yeah. with you. I completely agree with you. I mean, I know you're you're very well versed in various different ways to have mount flash and have them uh, with and without diffusers and different uh, brackets and arms in different directions. And you know, yeah, mm. I would say uh, as as a, as an ultimate authority on shadow, you, you're the one to listen to. Um, I haven't noticed any shadow issues. Like I shot like uh, with it now, I'm like really close up, and I use the. I had to. Sorry, Brandon, if you're looking, man. I'm really sorry, but I had to like butcher my <laughs> one of my spare shield bit on my diffuser and like angle it up just to get <laughs> through it. Sorry, butchered your, butchered yeah. your significant diffuser. But, but I got like yeah, but I, I got I got a spare. I've so got one here. I've got a spare one if you need it. Thanks, man. But yeah, it's like <laughs> something like that, you you won't have any issues. Like, I recommend yeah. the Sigmas Tech diffuser. It's really really good. Yeah, if you're going to do flash, yeah, they are the, they are one of the best. Yeah, you need to diffuser. And they, the, the light wraps around very nicely, and that's the key, isn't it? If you're getting that wrap around, you're not getting those shadows. So. Yeah, like a little bit of shadows, nice. It makes it look a bit more three D anyway, like flattening yeah. it out sometimes. It looks a bit yeah, cool. absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> uh, quick one from um, from Cliff. Uh, can you update OM One firmware using an Android phone? Yeah, sure you can. You just need yeah. to use the OM Image Share app, and the OM One can be updated through that, providing it's on at least version one point one already. And you can go from there. So you can do it on Android, Apple phones. You can't do it on a Windows phone though. Windows phones? What are they? What's a Windows phone? I don't know. Maybe you just started a new invention there, so you might be a millionaire tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> nice. You can't, you can't do the update on a Nokia 3210, is what you can't do. No. Um, but you can put your Nokia 3210 through the washing machine and it'll be fine. So, uh, Bernadette as well. Hi, Bernadette. Bernadette's asked if you were using, can you use and have you used AF for uh, in camera focus stacking? Yeah, yeah, it's better. I think it, um, it works best in um, autofocus, doesn't it? Because the it's manual quicker. focus it's is very a little bit, quick. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah, it works just fine. I recommend though, on that point, using the like the small focus points that we got, like a single one in the macro stuff, just really accurate. I use that one. Yeah. And I think on that note as well, I don't know if you've managed to do it or if you've thought about it, but uh, if you're doing it on the OM1, it's worth creating a custom AF target mode because if you use the tiny little box that comes as a default, there's quite a large jump gap between where the AF moves across mm. the screen but you can create a custom mode whereby the tiny little point moves in such tiny increments across and up and down uh and you get much finer control have i just we, oh i'm about to blow we're about to blow garrett's mind with this one. yeah yeah man like, gonna, yeah. like you're gonna have to oh put my switch back forward so yeah just if you if you know your own yeah, one and you're going to your custom af target modes and create a custom mode that has a one as a one step and a one yeah. difference and then it'll just be very really yeah yeah yes yeah, oh i am not gonna do this now because i'll just cry on camera <laughs> but yeah I'll, I'll check that out later and i think the last one that we'll probably pick up unless i would do a double check on the comments in just a second uh but darren and cams hi darren and cams uh just around the corner from me what would you Ooh. use the lens function for on the lens oh i guess you could use it for like focus peaking but i think i'm gonna set mine up so i can turn stacking on and off I think that'll be Same. quite handy. Yeah, so you just click focus stacking on and off, and then it's, it's faster than going in and out of the menu there. I absolutely agree. We are literally you know on the same page on pretty much all of this um despite the fact that um you have amazing images and i uh i have test images of a <laughs> you wouldn't believe this my test images of a coriander seed really there's the round of applause for the oh. coriander seed <laughs> i need to get out yeah i need to get yeah. i need to come out i need to come, come out with well. me man it'll be fun come, yeah. come out it'll be a really it'll be really fun We'll we'll sort that out. We'll definitely sort that out. And if not, yeah. I'm just gonna come down on one of your workshops when you get running again in April anyway. Um nice. Graham said, is the is a it's a pro lens, but is it protected from bicket crumbs? No, yeah, not the way I eat no, no. <laughs> it's, it's not crumb proof, right? It's not it's it's garage proof. <laughs> and if it survives me, it's gonna survive anything. <laughs> <laughs> definitely definitely yeah. well look uh we have run out of time yeah oh. it's been amazing i'm so glad we because this is we've just had some we had issues getting on and i'm so glad we managed to actually make it through and, and get there in the oh, end man the most fun things are always the most difficult anyway you know there's a challenge there and we've got to get through it that's like that's how you grow <laughs> absolutely absolutely yeah. well i mean we've both learned so we both learned so much in the 30 minutes before we came on live today didn't we yeah, uh, yeah. thanks man <laughs> but um, so on, obviously on behalf of OM, I want to thank you for your time and your absolutely phenomenal images. The, um, the comments, the positive comments for your images are people are blown away, literally mind blown, uh, amazing wow. images. Thanks. Lovely thank you people. for thanking you for a great presentation. Um, 
and I can't wait until the next one. We'll no, I'm again. excited. Thanks everyone for coming along. Honestly, it's really, really fun. Thank you for the patience from last time, but I think it's worth it. Like it's been yeah. good. It bought me time. So thanks everyone. Thanks, Dave. It's been it's been awesome, man. Thank you. Really and uh, in about in about twelve seconds, you can have that biscuit. Ten. Nine. <laughs> <laughs> to everybody now we're gonna get our biscuit. So thanks everybody for joining us. We'll see you again on another live in the future. Enjoy the rest of your day or night. Bye. 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 Bye.